Hello there. We are withdrawing non-combatants from the Ukraine. This situation is getting very serious and will hurt us too. One of the final precursors to violent conflict is when the potential combatants start withdrawing their non-combatants from the area. And that is exactly what's going on right now in the Ukraine capital of Kiev. And don't think that this has nothing to do with the UK, somehow concluding that we have no strategic involvement here. Because overall we do, and this will hit you very hard in your pocket. And another sure sign of imminent conflict is the last-minute deployment of large amounts of tactical mobile hospital facilities. The MASH units, if you will. But there have been no concrete reports of that happening as of yet. But Russia has been conducting large military exercises in the region. Exercises that could be used to covertly put the last pieces into the jigsaw of a cohesive invasion force. Now, there had already been reports that Russia was slowly and covertly scaling back the size of its embassy footprint in Kiev, a sure sign that things are about to kick off. But now we also hear that both the US and UK governments are starting to withdraw their embassy staff as well. With the latest being that half the UK presence will be brought back home. Now on top of that, the US President Joe Biden is said to be considering sending more troops, aircraft and warships to the area to bolster the already sizeable NATO presence there. And reports vary as to the potential size of this extra force, with the Telegraph saying 5,000 troops and the Mail saying anything up to 50,000. And the UK has already sent 2,000 anti-tank missiles to the Ukraine, together with the specialists to train Ukrainian troops in how to deploy them. But Putin has also been busy, placing 125,000 of his troops with tanks and helicopters at the Ukrainian border, and sending a fleet of Baltic Sea-based amphibious assault ships on the long trip round to the Black Sea. But I will point out that Russia has no history of conducting successful amphibious operations. And news is now also emerging that Russia is sending a fleet of ships to an area off the west coast of Ireland to conduct live fire exercises. And the vessels involved will be operating inside Ireland's 200 nautical mile economic exclusion zone albeit outside their 12-mile territorial waters. And nothing can stop them doing that. Now, we have huge data pipelines that carry critical information between us and the US on the seabed out there, so who knows what these Russian naval forces could get up to. All that internet and time-critical market data could be at risk including your social media line to news sources outside of the mainstream. Now all we can do, it seems, is put more military assets into the surrounding NATO countries and sit it out, waiting to see if Putin does take advantage of the winter freeze that hardens the ground, making it much easier for a swift attack with heavy armour. But at the moment, Putin's objectives here are not clear. Some say he wants to install a puppet government in Kiev, while others say he wants to capture East Ukraine up to the Dnieper River that bisects the country down the middle, so providing a land corridor from Russia to the Crimea that it had already annexed back in 2014. While others say he also wants to grab the ports, such as Odessa in the Black Sea, and so landlock and basically blockade the Ukraine. But fear not everyone, Joe Biden will be having productive negotiations with Vladimir Putin using every ounce of his mental capacity to secure the peace. Yes folks, the fate of Western civilization lies in the hands of a senile old fart who can't string a sentence together and who is about as coherent as... 
Well, actually, Biden sets the gold standard for being incoherent. And just mirroring Afghanistan, I wonder if he's planning on handing billions of dollars worth of US military hardware over to Putin and then evacuating. From a UK perspective, one suspects the initial response to any attack on Ukraine will be heavy diplomacy and sanctions against the Russian state and its kingpins, as well as financial actions, and one of those could be the removal of Russia from the global payment system called SWIFT. But that might have implications for all those that rely on Russian gas, for example. How would they be able to pay for it? Not only that... UK ministers have been warned that Putin will weaponise our gas supplies. And if he does shut down gas supplies to the EU, mainly Germany, it will push UK gas prices through the roof and into the stratosphere. Not because the UK imports Russian gas, because we import virtually none from Russia, but because the wholesale price of gas would shoot up. A government spokesman said... The UK is in no way dependent on Russian gas supply. We meet around half our supply from within British territorial waters and the vast majority of imports come from reliable suppliers such as Norway. Less than 3% of our gas was sourced from Russia in 2020. The current energy situation is due to high global gas prices, not security of supply. So you can have as much gas as you want, as long as you can afford it. But that will not just affect you heating your homes, it will affect everything. Every business that relies on gas in any shape or form will inevitably have to raise their prices to compensate. Inflation, which we already knew would be ramping up due to Boris's new taxes, can only go ever higher. Every public sector service will have to divert more funding into their energy needs. That could affect the availability of other public services. Unless the government ploughs even more gilts onto the debt markets to borrow the immediate cash it needs to shore up public spending. Then there's another big issue in all this that I haven't heard anyone else talk about yet and that's the issue of what civilians do in the face of a hostile invading army. The Ukrainians are promising to fight long and hard for their country, and that would mean door-to-door urban combat. And unless they are prepared to pick up arms, civilians generally up sticks and seek refuge elsewhere. Are we preparing to accept many thousands of such people into Western Europe? So as you can see, a Russian invasion of the Ukraine would have huge implications for us all, even if we are not directly involved militarily. And there will also be long-term implications if Putin gets away with this. It will drastically redraw the European geopolitical map, the exact outcome that Putin seeks. He wants to reimpose Russia as a superpower, and the Ukraine might be his chance given the weakness of the West, mainly due to our lack of true energy security and our lack of foresight where maintaining our military capabilities are concerned. This episode should be a wake up call for the UK. And for all those Ramonas out there who still think that the EU is the route to peace in Europe, then look again. Although the EU is sending a financial support package to the Ukraine, German reliance on Russian gas means that the EU response to an invasion will be inherently split. And if Germany, the EU industrial engine room, is hit economically, then the EU as a whole will suffer. But it's not just the supply of gas where Putin is able to exert pressure on the EU. Believe it or not, there's also the issue of wood. Yes, Russia has just placed huge export taxes and restrictions on the export of its wood to the EU, as well as reducing the number of export points that handle wood exports into the bloc. With an EU Commission statement saying, The Russian restrictions are highly detrimental to the EU wood processing industry. 
which relies on exports from Russia and creates significant uncertainty on the global wood market. And Brussels is bleating to the WTO about it too. Now these restrictions came into force this month and they are part of radical changes being made to the Russian forestry sector so as to use more of its own wood domestically. And given that Russia's share of the global log market is about 12% at the moment, what they do is significant. At the end of the day, a military incursion would cost both the Ukraine and Russia dearly. But its effects will be felt worldwide, and that means it will affect you. So what's your opinion on a Russian invasion of the Ukraine? Please like and comment below. Please subscribe and like this video, buy a mug and support me on Patreon or PayPal and thank you for watching.